Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. This is part three of our Appalachian Homestead adventure. Part one, you saw the old homestead house. We explored that. And then we took you up the hill to the barn. And this third part is just kind of our, our nature walk coming back. And it's just, it's just us enjoying the day. And wow, you can see the bugs even on the camera. But uh, it's just walking through the woods, coming back, the old trails. You know, it's that time of year, the acorns, the buckeyes, and the black walnuts, they're all hitting the ground. You know, we've, we'll be freezing before you know it, but fall garden's coming up. But we wanted to just take you on this adventure and, and show you the sights. And, and a lot of it was the first time Denise got to see it. I've been through parts of it and I am going to end this real quick because, man, the bugs are just loving me today. They know the freeze is coming and they are getting their last, their last ends. So enjoy the video and it's coming at you. So that's where we live, way down there. Mm. Look. Look up on the shelf there, hun. You don't see it. The old pickaxe. Oh, yeah, I do. Now I do. Very cool. Bet that planted a few, uh, few rows of corn. Yeah. Come on over. Wow, this is really thick grass in here. Yep. Yeah, I know. It's, I'd love to get the, uh, Get some cattle up here on it. Sheep would be happy too. True. Might make them sick though. Probably. Ground cherries. <clears throat> Lots of them. But, oh, careful. Crazy how connected all these properties are. Yeah. So all the ground cherries. Old, uh... This is an old mower. It's a. Uh, I mean, you can see how, how pitted the, the metal is in this. Is that without going on the tractor and, like, go through the dirt and uh, pull it? This, no, this actually is, these blades, it's a lawnmower. This is what you would, you ride, you drive down the, the road, and then if you've got a, a bank that you can't drive on, you'd set it, and this would mow down anything on the bank. Oh, okay. But the old metal wheels, I mean, this thing is cool. But there's another tool up here, too. Yeah. And this one, I'm not sure. We might need some viewer input on this one. Let me get my footing and I'll help you up. Hmm? Kind of. Just watch, watch the chicken coop. Still has yeah. the chicken wire on it. Spider webs. In the door. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, literally, you look like, you know, just, just replace a couple of boards and you could put the chickens right back in it. But yeah, this is an old... Corn shucker? I, that's what I thought it was. But if you come up, you can see this was a... The belt drive on this thing is wood. I mean, you can see the wood on it. This is where the belt, belt would go onto a... Probably a steam-powered motor. I bet Justin would know what it is. I'll bet Justin would know what this is. Justin, what is this? <laughs> but let me get up here. I can get a better picture. Right, Here's Justin from Metcalf Mills. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys can hear, but that, yeah, Justin at Metcalf Mills. I'll bet you know what this is. But here's the old gear. I mean, the switch the gears and and I can't really tell you. I mean. It's got 
it's got a drum here with, whoo, yikes. It's got a drum with teeth on it. So kind of looks like what you might have as a cider press, but on a super scale. So I'm thinking more corn. I don't know. I guess we'll find out, hopefully. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I've got it. So, anyway, it's got a, some kind of a shoot, so I don't know what that is. But... Now, did they say this used to be a dairy? Um, this was, this was all dairy cows. I think the actual barn where they milked and stuff was down closer to Larry, actually over by it near his brother Turner. Okay. Yep. As soon as you want to turn. Just want to make sure I don't step on anything. Or trip on anything. Yes. You can fall into me. I'll, I'll catch you. I might land on my face, but at least you'll have a soft landing. I'm actually surprised we haven't scared up any deer at the moment. That was my boot. That was not last night's beans. system good yeah, pretty amazing that view out there just amazing love that view one of these days we'll have to video for them the top of our property because you can see way out yeah take another trip up that way we just have to uh, get some roads cut in. <laughs> well, we can hoof it up like we've done in the past, but that's a that's a half a day trek on its own just to get up to the top. Thank you. Loki and I went up there. Yep, and he came back full of ticks. <laughs> came back full of ticks. That was last year when we first moved onto the property. And Guineas have done an yeah. amazing job getting rid of them, so yeah. it'd be great if we can move them up this way too. And uh, one of our neighbors, they don't want the guineas, but they're appreciative of them. Hmm. Now we are walking down to our property and we'll show you about where our property starts here in just a moment. There's something charming about a dirt road. There is. On a dirt road. I know, and and then there and though. then there's the muddy season. And there's the muddy, yes, the muddy season. <laughs> Strange building. At first, I thought because it's right here on the creek, I thought maybe it used to be an old water-powered like wheelhouse, but there's nothing of the sort. An apple tree. It doesn't take long to take over, does it? Nope. So nature, nature has a way. Yeah. yeah so the the, cor the corner of that building drops down into the creek and then it drops right down here and we just finally after almost 11 months got a survey crew out here to run the property line for us we just wanted to make sure and yeah we, we just want yeah absolutely we just we didn't know and and you know anything happens you know because we're going to have our sheep and cows up this far we didn't want to overstep the boundary of course and this just kind of protects us so I set the stake in here. This is straight across from that spot. And then I'm working on running the fence line through. And it's not where we, we expected Yeah, it is. It is. And if you if you look, you can kind of see the, the wire along there. Um, but you can see it right up here, right close. But that's the electric fence that Travis put up for his horses when they were over here. And he got it almost exactly right right on. But Anyway, but we, we do want to put a little more permanent fencing in. I've got T-posts up here. There's some already in place, obviously, but uh, I have been spending my evenings with the weed whacker cleaning this up because once I've got those T-posts in, 
Uh, Billy's going to help us get the electric fence set up so we can stop spending an hour every other day moving the sheep. Yeah, and if you see over here, so our property runs all the way over to the other side of the creek, and then that's where Larry's property starts. So we own past, past that, the, at the end of the edge of the creek there. Yeah. On the, the other side is where what we own. The the old house and the barn that we showed you in the previous videos, we walked up the path on the other side of that clearing and back up. It's that stuff's over there. So you know, like she said, our, our property, the creek is the property line, so we've got this little sliver of road. We're actually walking on a right-of-way right now. But you can see how far I got with the weed whacker. But well, we're getting yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting doing pretty good. I had to take off the, uh, the string blade and put on a blade blade, and it's making short work of it. Also kicking up sparks, too, because I keep hitting rocks. And, and to that point, you can see there are so many rocks in the ground that when I have put in the T-posts, I've had to move them several times to find a spot to go between the rocks in the ground. So when they're out clearing the fields, they'll just pile, pile rocks up around the posts themselves, which one, when they were putting it up originally, they would use that just to hold the posts up because they couldn't dig. And then over time... You move the rocks, you throw them over, and you cre almost create a little wall. You can see how it kind of banks up from the road here. But what's amazing, I want to show. So there's, I mean, there's obviously a lot of weeds in here, right? But look at the grass. So last year we had so many weeds, and we did come through. We had we had to brush hog before Travis put his horses down. We, we just, it was so overgrown. But we didn't have this grass here last year. So just from cutting it down, putting the horses on it, um, and then the spots, we still have some spots that are uh, clay that we're putting more hay in. But just in a season, we've been able to bring all this grass back by using natural means. We didn't fertilize. We didn't use grass seed. We utilized ruminant animals and allowed the horses and like the sheep right now to do what they do. And you can see, you know, so everybody talks about the issue with our soil, you know, and that we're losing our topsoil and you know there's not enough fertilizer and we're having to use all these chemical fertilizers you don't have to nature you, nature will heal yes, itself god god gave us ruminant animals so and i wish i could remember what joel salatin said the ah uh, the sequestration yeah i'll have to remember what he said yeah we'll, we'll we'll find it again but yeah. he, he he he's got a great phrase for that but yeah but essentially you know we don't get nutrients from grass but ruminant animals yeah. do we eat the ruminant animals we get the nutrients that they get from the grass but this is what they do. And there is a solution to our soil problem. It's ruminant animals. Yep. But yeah, it's, just, sure. it's amazing to see, you know, we, for gosh, years, right? We, we watched YouTube videos of Joel Salatin and, and everything else. And, you know, other people talking about how ruminant animals work the land and we believe them but when you see it for yourself in action it's truly amazing and it just shows you just the plan that god had for us and for this world and it's, it's really an amazing the ecosystem that we have and how it all works together is pretty amazing it really is and what i what i'm trying to show you over here and i don't know if i can really capture it but if you look whoa, step down into a pit if you if you don't look down at this grass area and just look up those the the weeds and the overgrowth that was that is how that entire pasture was it without was yeah without the grass and in fact the weeds had grown up so high and the brambles and things like that it shaded out the grass mm -hmm. so once we once we cut it back and like this over here this was cut this was cut back last season just like the the other side over here the we cut it before all the flower all the the weed flowers went to seed so they didn't have a chance to spring back and it gave that grass that chance to come through and so whereas this time last year this whole thing was all that golden rod and what's the yellow the, the ragweed rat ragweed and the it's, rose bush and yeah the, this year it's completely different so, amazing in one season uh, yep uh, we'll keep going and that is really kind of excited that that is a buckeye tree mom go buckeyes 
your family's from Ohio. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sorry, we're going to be, it gets loud when you walk in the leaves. Yeah. Yes. And the bees, we need to get moved. Mm. Another one. That's the second oh, dead vole dead or mole or whatever. Why are they just dying in there? Well, I don't know. And I don't know if there's uh, a couple little cats running around here. They might be just Why catching them. them. I don't know. Maybe they weren't hungry. Maybe they just, the thrill, the thrill of the sport. Because, you know, cats are like that. We're keeping this area wild for the deer, right? Yeah, we are. This along, along the road here that now where the black, the asphalt ends, this, we're back on Larry's side of the property. The creek kind of means. Yeah, the, yeah, the creek kind of back and forth. But this little area in here, this little grotto, if you will, we're going to leave that pretty much natural. I don't plan on really... That's going to be a zone five, even though it's not necessarily as far from the house as the rest of the forest, but you can have a zone five pretty much anywhere on your property. Yeah, this for, for, for the deer, because that's, you know, when it gets hot, they like to hide away. But do you want to explain what a zone five is in permaculture terms? Uh, yeah, so you have zones, and I'm sure most of you watch Perma Pastures Farm, they, they talk about it. But zone five is the area that you kind of leave wild, that you leave alone. And like at Billy's place, a lot of behind his house he's going to keep zone five and it's just a thing that you keep natural and wild for the wildlife that's around you zone one is supposed to be um you know the areas that you go to every day you know and then you've got zone two zone three zone four and then zone five essentially just stays wild you leave it alone and then that's the road that we took up just a real pretty little walk through there and then you can kind of see the fence posts over there. That's the edge of the creek. So, again, this, this area is, belongs to Larry, and we talked about it. Maybe uh, between the two of us, we might plant a few, I don't know, peach trees or apple trees or something in here because it's not really being used. You get the, the trees growing and the apples drop, and the deer can eat the apples instead of our garden. And... Oh, that bone sauce does pretty well. Yeah, no, the, they, well, that's, see, we're on the other side of the, the creek. We've got the bone sauce on our stuff here, on, you know, where the strawberries are, and obviously on the garden and all that. Uh, but, uh, you yeah, know, this is, I say, when the, when the deer want to go from that forest to that forest, shortest distance is right up this road. That's why Larry uh, winds up with the deer damage, and the bone sauce has been amazing for that keeping them away so. and we're back home hello rooster rooster cogburn there's turkeys close to the ducks of course quack quack and turkeys are right up behind them all right everybody i hope you enjoyed our walk through uh, the appalachian old homestead and we are back at our barn it's uh you know this is an old tobacco barn built in the 1860s. And as we wandered through the uh, through the property and the adjoining property and, and kind of looked it over and reminisced about things, a little bit of permaculture knowledge thrown in there and sprinkled sprinkled about because, you know, we like to educate and share what we know. But, um, you know, when you think about it, our home itself... Thank you, Rooster. Our home was the oldest home in this holler. It used to be a very, very short, uh, narrow, two-story building. And, you know, as we've talked about in other videos, in the, uh, and it was built in the 1860s. In the 1960s, 70s, they cut down the, the top part and, and shortened it up, widened it out, lengthened it up. Uh, but we... We live in the oldest house in this holler, way back in here. I mean, there's just, there's really not a whole lot in behind us. But anyway, we thought you'd enjoy taking a nature walk and just, you know, just kind of looking things over. But, uh, um, you know, share your comments, share, share your thoughts with us. We'd like to know what, what you think. And if you uh, enjoy those kind of videos, if there's more of that we can do, we'd love to share that with you too. So, um Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. God bless. See you on the next video. Bye, everybody.